All right, I just gotta say, I'm not crazy about the direction The Mandalorian is going in. I decided to condense this review of episode 2, 3, and 4 into one video. I did this because such little relevant story actually took place in these episodes that I didn't feel like wasting my time creating separate videos. So I'll do a quick breakdown of the episodes and then give my final thoughts. In episode 2, Mando first goes to Tatooine to visit the weird lady so he can get a droid. Then, Mando goes to Mandalore to bathe in the waters under the mines to redeem his honor. Mando runs into some creatures and has some action sequences with them. Then Mando gets captured by some knockoff General Grievous. Grogu escapes and travels in Mando's ship to get help from Bo-Katan. Bo-Katan goes to Mandalore and rescues Mando from knockoff Grievous. They then both go together to the ancient waters of Mandalore. When Mando steps in the water, he sinks to the bottom. Because apparently, Mando is unaware that if an object has a density higher than that of water, it will sink. Bo-Katan then jumps in the water to save Mando again. She pulls him out of the water, but not before seeing a giant monster. And that's the end of Episode 2. Are you serious? Just like Episode 1, this episode is plagued with filler plot. Mando didn't need to see the weird lady on tattooing to get a robot that he barely used. The objections might be that the robot led Grogu back to Bo-Katan when Din was captured. But think about how much time in the first two episodes they spent just looking for a robot to navigate Mandalore. Can the amount of screen time used finding a robot for this mission be justified? I don't think so. Then a whole lot of time was used up in meaningless dialogue sequences between Mando and Bo-Katan. So that's more screen time stolen. Gone forever. But outside of screen time wasting, I have some other criticisms. And that's about Mando himself. Mando in this episode was completely incompetent. He struggled to fight the cave monsters, the same ones that Bo-Katan easily killed. He easily fell for traps, traps that Bo-Katan didn't fall for. He couldn't escape his situation, he needed to be rescued, by Bo-Katan. He continues to struggle with the Darksaber, it's like the more he uses it, the worse he gets with it. On the other hand, Bo-Katan uses it like she's wielded it her entire life. I mean, she might as well have it at this point. In fact, Mano should just give her the sword, the throne, the baby, his ship, and maybe even give her the show itself, since he didn't hesitate to give her his balls. Damn! Now maybe you think I'm being too harsh, or maybe you think I just have a problem with a strong female character saving a man. Honestly, I can care less how strong and skilled Bo-Katan is, it's how incompetent Mando is that bothers me. Every moment of this episode, he was incompetent, and he needed to be saved because of it. But the absolute lowest moment of incompetency was when Mando nearly drowned himself. This guy didn't think it was possible that the water might be deeper, that his armor might be too heavy. Think about all the struggles our hero went through, fighting Moff Gideon, dark troopers, holding his own against a Jedi, and a Raincore, just to drown himself like an idiot. If Bo-Katan had not have been there, he would be dead, and at least he would have died a Mandalorian. There has to be a better way of writing this, where your hero needs help, but still remains competent. Anyway, I'll move on. In Episode 3, Bo-Katan, Grogu, and Mando leave Mandalore. They're intercepted by TIE Fighters. Then there is a TIE Fighter battle. In the process, Bo-Katan's castle is destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> then the episode cuts to a completely different storyline about the scientists from season one. Why? Why? I'm really not going to spend much time covering this story. It took up the majority of this episode. It's not part of the main story, or maybe it will be, but do we want it to be? Let's be real. It's entirely designed to explain the horrible writing decisions that the sequel Star Wars made. It's supposed to explain how Darth Sidious returned. Disney didn't give us an explanation in the ninth movie. We waited several years, and now they're going to sneak one in, in one of Disney's only good projects they've done? Don't pollute this show with your other crappy projects, Disney. Just put it to rest. It'll be easier if we all forget. After an immense amount of screen time wasting, we get back to the main story. 
Mando and Bo-Katan return to the other Mandalorians, and because they bathed in the waters, they are both redeemed. And that's it for episode 3. You're fucking kidding me? Fuck you! So the pattern of screen time wasting continues like the previous two episodes. The only relevant things to occur in this episode, that are part of the main story at least, is that Bo-Katan lost her home, and that her and Mando are now redeemed. Because they threw that other useless story in there, it took nearly an hour to gather that information. Unbelievable. Now on to episode 4. Episode 4 begins with the Mandalorians training by the same lake where they were attacked by the same sea monster from Jurassic World. To no one's surprise, a flying dragon creature swoops down, taking this irrelevant Mandalorian's even more irrelevant son. They inform Mando and Bo-Katan that this is not the first child that has been taken by the creature. What? So basically their base is located where multiple cryptids have attacked. It's pretty much the island from Jurassic Park. Despite having multiple planets throughout the entire galaxy to choose from, this is where they chose. Makes sense to me. <laughs> they devise a rescue mission to save the boy. They decide to climb the mountain instead of using their jetpacks because their jetpacks make too much noise. Well, isn't that convenient? Bo-Katan is somehow the only one with climbing experience. Despite recently being accepted back, she is put in charge of the rescue mission. Of course she is. This seems implausible. During the useless rescue mission, Grogu is hanging out with the armorer. She makes him a Beskar armor plate. During that process, Grogu has flashbacks that explain how he survived Order 66. He was saved by the actor of Jar Jar Binks. And that's about it. There wasn't much to it. Although it answered some questions, it raises others. And it also fell out of place in this episode. Like many other moments in this season, it seemed like it was just thrown in there to suck up screen time. Eventually, the boy is rescued by Mando. And the big irrelevant Mandalorian owes him one. That's as good as money, sir. Those are IOUs. At the end of the episode, Bo-Katan tells the armorer that she saw the Mythosar, a creature worshipped by the Mandalorians. The armorer ignorantly dismissed this claim for some reason, and that's it for episode 4. What the fuck was that? Jesus Christ! Fuck! What else is there to say that I haven't said for the previous episodes? The entire plot for rescuing the boy has nothing to do with the larger narrative. There's really no way to defend this. I can't even see how this will be important later on. I can't see how most of the criticisms I made will be important later on. Without sounding redundant. The common problem I have with all these episodes is screen time wasting. Mando and Bo-Katan going to Mandalore, bathing in the water, and being redeemed was all that was necessary in the first four episodes. It took almost three hours to show what could have been shown in one maybe two episodes. And that's if you even decide to show the pointless storyline of Mando needing to be redeemed. This show needs to pick it up really soon, or they're going to start losing more and more of their audience. And for the super defenders of this show, who insult those who criticize this show, and say if you don't like it, don't watch it. Remember, if half the audience leaves, so does half the budget. If you want this show to continue so that you have endless entertainment, then the quality must remain the same or get better. So no more filler plot, no more unearned action sequences, no more forced moments for plot convenience, no more side storylines that try to fix the god-awful sequels. That ends my review. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. See you in the next one.